All right. Welcome. Um, so we're going to look at number eight from the unit circle section. Um, we're going to do this a little low tech because um, I think that will help if we can do some of the algebra out. So eight has to do with finding a point on the unit circle. And there are lots of different um, things going on, but all of these parts, A, B, C, and D, essentially come down to the same, um, the same equation. So let's tackle A. So the first part is that we're given an X value and we are given that Y is negative. So I come over here. So we're looking for a point on the unit circle. We're trying to figure out the Y value of that point. And we're given the X value is negative 0 0.3. So we know that we're over here. And then since y has to be negative, we know that we're down in the third quadrant. So all we really need then is to remember the equation of the unit circle. And since x is equal to negative 0 0.3, we're just going to plug that in for x. And that's the, that's the setup. So we square negative 0 0.3, we solve for y. At some point, we're going to get um, y squared equals a number. We take the square root of both sides. And whenever you square root both sides, you need to remember this positive or negative square root. And so we need the negative square root because of the initial condition given to us. Okay, so on to B. B said that the point is in quadrant two. Okay, so now we're up here. And that x is equal to two y. We're gonna follow the same uh, protocol. We're just gonna use that same equation um, but noting since we're in quadrant two, the x is going to be a negative value and the y is going to be a positive value. We're just going to use that same equation. And this time we're just going to substitute in negative 2y for x. That's all we have to do there. Once you square, both, square um, the negative 2y, You'll add it to the y squared, you'll solve for y, and then you can plug that back in to get the x value. So the process is pretty much the same. Maybe a little extra step in there. But the basic idea is this. Since x is equal to negative 2y, we replace x with that. Moving on to c. This one, it gets a, this one's actually, um, we don't have to do as much work on this one if we just think about it. The trick to this one, though, is that um, it's going around more than once, and it's going clockwise. And clockwise is negative rotation, so we've got to be a little careful about that. So for part C, 29 pi over 6 is rotating around a couple of different times and then settling. So, sorry. So to go around the circle one time is to go 2 pi. So for me, that it helps me, since my denominator is 6, I thought about how to make 2 pi using a denominator of 6. So 12 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6 is 24 pi over 6, so that's 4 pi. So that's twice around the circle. And then another 5 pi over 6, but it's going in the negative direction. So if we think about, let me do a little picture over here. So as we're coming around the circle, oops, sorry for the fringe. Um, as we're coming around the circle, we're starting from the point one zero because that's what it told us in the problem. This is where we always start. This is always our initial side. So we've gone around 12 pi over 6, another 12 pi over 6, but then another, f and notice we're going clockwise, we're going 5 pi over 6. So that's going to bring us right about to here. So if I think about where this is, this is one of those special triangle situations that we had, right? This one is going to correspond to a 30, 60, 90 triangle that we could fit right in there. So the x value here is going to be the medium side, and the y value is going to be the short side of this 30, 60, 90 triangle which means that the x value is going to be square root of 3 over 2 and the y value, sorry, negative square root of 3 over 2 because of which direction we're going, and then negative 1 half. So that's how you do C. 
Um, just a little sidebar here. We're at the angle negative five pi over six, which we don't usually think of things in terms of negative angles. This would be considered coterminal with the positive angle that is seven pi over six, because if we went all the way from our positive direction, our terminal side would be at seven pi over six here. So seven pi over six and negative five pi over six are coterminal. They are also both coterminal to 29 pi over 6 because they all stop at the same terminal side. All right, the last bit that I want to talk about is part D, and it has at what exact points does a line intersect the unit circle? Part D is going to be just like part B, and I want to try to cover some things up in just a second. So let's come back to the original question. So at what exact points does y equal 1 half x plus 1 half intersect the unit circle? We're going to come right back to our original equation. And we're going to just substitute in. Now, if you multiply this out, you have to remember to um, expand it. So this, when you're squaring a binomial, you have to do 1, one half x plus 1 half times quantity 1 half x plus 1 half. Do not distribute that exponent of 2 in there. You'll get something that does not make sense. Okay? I went a little weird way about it. I liked, I don't like dealing with fractions until I have to. But essentially what you'll come down to is this. So all we did was we substituted for y because we want that um, we want that 1 half x plus 1 half to be our y value. Once we expand it out, we have this. And then I put a little star here to remind me. There's a little trick um, that we usually use the balance method to solve for things. But the balance method can also make our lives a little easier. And a lot of people don't like to deal with fractions. I love fractions, but I don't like to deal with them if I don't have to because I tend to make mistakes. So looking at this, I think about, well, is there a number that I can multiply everything by so that my fractions go away? And in this case, multiplying by 4 is what we want to do. So I'm going to multiply everything here by 4. So that means 4 times x squared, 4 times 1 fourth x squared, etc., all the way, including this equals 1. Once we do that, now we have nice little integer coefficients, which I like a little bit better because I make less mistakes. Cleaning that up, we've got some like terms, 4x squared plus x squared will give us a 5x squared. And then I'm ch I have a quadratic that I need to solve. And before I can solve a quadratic, I need to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And now I've got a quadratic that's ready for me to solve because now I'm just going to see if this is factorable, which it turns out to be. And using our zero product property, that means that we can now just say, and I don't have it on here, but that x would equal negative 1 and that x would equal positive 3 fifths. And then just to kind of check and see what this, so we have two solutions here, right? We solve for the two x values. We can find the y values by plugging each of those x values into our original equation to figure out what our y values would be. And then if we come over here, I was playing around with Desmos to kind of see what this looks like. So I have my unit circle, right? And we know that at the point um, x equals negative 1, we're going to have um, we're going to have this touching. So where x equals negative 1 is going to be right there. And also where x is equal to um, 3 fifths. So that would be about Let's see, x is equal to 3 fifths, yeah, about there. And so that's either going to be up here or down here. But we know that our line has a positive slope. So if our line is hitting through here, it's going to be moving up. It's going to hit in quadrant 1. So my y value is going to be positive there. And big reveal, there it is. So we have our two points of intersection there and there.
I hope this was helpful. Um, I will come back with another video soon.